I was at the Hot Eagles camp today, a lot going on, and I met a legend in our industry, and that's Mark Eckel, who does a phenomenal job for NJ.com, and he's adding another significant accomplishment to his lengthy resume, and that's going to be coming out at the end of the month, a book called The Big 50 Men and Moments Who Shaped the Philadelphia Eagles, and Mark Eckel from NJ.com is kind enough to give us a few minutes right now. Mark, thanks for a few minutes, and how are you? No problem, Zach. I'm I'm a little cooler now than I was this afternoon. You're we out there in the <laughs> hundred degree, uh, whatever you know, the index heat heat, heat index was today. But. Yeah, it was definitely hot, and I was surprised. I saw one Eagle staff member in long sleeves and also sweatpants. I don't get how they do it. Not all that. That makes no sense to me. But that's that's I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of rough. And no doubt about that. So the big news, there was two stories today. You had the trade. We'll get to that in a second. But I thought the bigger story going in was if Doug Peterson was going to address the communication problem with Lane Johnson. And then you also got a bonus with Howie Roseman talking. Neither of them had any comment. Did that surprise you with them not addressing the communication problem? Well, once Howie said, I have nothing to say about Lane Johnson, I knew Doug would wouldn't either because obviously they got together and decided okay we're not talking about this anymore because Doug actually talked too much the other night <laughs> and I think that's what got him in trouble um I guess it was after the game last Thursday so um I mean, <laughs> I mean Doug had him appealing before it was confirmed that he had actually he's going to get suspended so um yeah I think Doug spoke a little too much and they probably somebody probably went to him and said, "All right, that's, we're not saying anything more about Lane Johnson." Especially since Doug also said, "This is where the miscommunication all all came about." Uh, I think I I actually asked him last Thursday night after the, after the Tampa Bay game, you know, when did you find out about this? And he said, "I heard it the same way you guys did," meaning he didn't find out till I guess it was what that Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday prior to the game. And then Lane said he he knew on July 30th and told the Eagles on July 30th. So somebody, either Lane's not telling us the truth or Doug just spoke or didn't tell the truth, or they told the Eagles and the Eagles didn't tell Doug, which I find hard to believe. So there's something in there that wasn't – that. and today we were hoping to clear it up, but since today they didn't talk about it, it's still kind of out there as to what exactly happened. That's the thing that I don't understand. I'm fine if you don't want to address the Lane Johnson issue and talk about the impact that it has on the team and uh, if he said sorry to his teammate. I could understand that until an official announcement happens, but I think it's silly of them and foolish of them, especially with a new head coach at this stage, and you've seen communication problems in the past where he didn't talk to uh, Lane Johnson, he didn't talk to Nelson Aguilar. Give him credit, he did talk to Bradham. But I, I think this is a situation they could have clarified and nipped it in the butt today, but they elected not to do that. And I think it's a bad call on the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, it is. They, they, because, they, because they did address it and then, put it, and then left it and Lane addressed it and there was a, a discrepancy, I think they needed to clear up the discrepancy, but they chose to go. See, I was, I'll be honest, in all my years of covering the team and covering a lot of different coaches, I was a little little shocked and well, pleasantly shocked, I guess, by Doug's uh, candor through this thing. I mean, I expected when we asked him the other night, oh, listen, my guys, I can't talk about Lane until you know nothing's official, blah blah blah. Uh, you know, and, and even like, even this, even like to come out in favor, like even he they've thrown Doug. I mean, Doug Peterson has kind of thrown Lane Johnson, and I don't blame him because Lane Johnson is a major disappointment now. But he's kind of thrown him under the bus a couple times now. Um, you know, he didn't he, he he didn't have his back right from the go when he when asked about it. Like he could have said, "Listen, we're hoping this isn't right." I, you know, I've talked to Lane, and Lane says he didn't do anything wrong. No, he was like, "Hey, you know, the guys failed the test. We we got to move on." And you know, we we have other people here that can that can play, and you know, went on and on about. It. And then when Lane blamed the NFLPA, I guess that was Saturday. Yeah, the game was Thursday. They were off. Yeah, it was so Saturday. When, when, when they came back to practice Saturday, and Lane told a couple guys, you know, he 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 went off and blamed blamed the union for his problems. Um, Peterson was asked about that, and again, didn't take didn't say like, yeah, you know, the union really needs to stand by their players. And I can't believe they did. No, he said, listen, guys, at the end of the day, it's on you. You determine what goes in your body. 
And uh, so again, he, you know, he, a couple times, you know, he was not just talked about Lane Johnson, but said some interesting things. So now to stop talking, like I said, obviously it was an organizational de- decision that came down. I'm sure they, they, they met it. They met yesterday or early this morning and, and decided, okay, they're, they're going to ask us and we're going to say nothing. Maybe it's because I don't live an opulent lifestyle, but I'm looking at this Lane Johnson situation, and I think he needs to start taking some accountability to blame the Players Association. I think it's very weak. But how dumb can a player be with $35 million on the line and already failing a test in the past to put himself in this situation again? I just can't fathom it. Well, there's there's, there's two ways of looking at it, and you you took the one way. Yes, it's dumb. It's just... I've I've compared it to and 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 God forbid I've you know I've I've never gotten a DUI and I hope and I plan and and can never get one, but if by some crazy way I if I ever do get one, I'll tell you Zach and you can hold me to this I will never get another one, never. I, I mean, would hope so because because of the ramifications that go on and this it's kind of a comparison in that, okay he got suspended he you know he he failed a test a couple of years ago got suspended for four games, he knows. If he gets, if he gets, if he fails again, it's ten games. He knows that, just like you know. All right, you know you're going to go to jail for your if you have two DUI. So, I mean, you know, don't do it. <laughs> I don't care what the stuff. I don't care what the NFLPA app said. I don't care. Just don't do it, unless, unless, and this is the other side. Maybe he needs to do it. Maybe he's not any good without. Him. That's what I think it really comes down to. I think it's in his brain that he's probably been doing this for a long time, that he thinks this is a necessity for him to take this supplement. Because we're talking, it's not like it's a, a one bonus check of $100,000 for an NFL player. This is $35 big million. <laughs> guaranteed. That was guaranteed. Yeah. It's now no longer guaranteed. And, and he still may earn it. But, again, I see here's my biggest question on the whole Lane Johnson situation. And I, I wrote this the other day. If you're the Eagles, can you tr- can can you still trust this? Guy? No, no way. Ooh, right? I mean, another because one more time, it's a two-year suspension, which basically there aren't many players who have come back. I mean, Mike Vick is the one that comes to mind, but not many people, not many players in this league have come back after missing two years of football. Mark Eckel joins us from NJ.com on the Zach Gelb Show. So what do you look Thursday night against the Steelers in this offensive line? Because they didn't give the fans many encouraging things to think about after the first performance. Well, no, they didn't. Well, the first team, in fairness, the first team Only line three plays, yeah. Did, didn't play long. Yeah, they, they played the first series, and then they, and they mixed and matched a little bit. Um, it's not a good line. I mean, let's, let's be honest. I mean, you know, Alan Barber... Uh, moving back out to right tackle, which I think is the right move. Um, not that I think Barber's a great right tackle, but he but he has experience there. He was a tackle before he came to the Eagles, and the Eagles made him a guard. And uh, if you remember correctly, a couple of years ago, when Johnson got suspended the first time, back in 2014, um, that was the move that, they were, that, that the former staff was was going to make Barber was going to Barber started the year at right tackle and then broke his ankle the first game and missed the missed the entire season. So um, that's probably he's I don't I'm not a big I, I think he's better than Matt Tobin or now that it was, Dennis Kelly was the other possibility but he's no longer here so that's out of the mix. Um, I'm a little surprised that Isaac Sumalo the rookie I can't say surprised because if you're a third round pick and you're a guard you should be in the mix to 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 start. I mean third round guards. You know that's, you know that's what you should do. But he really hasn't had a great camp, and he he was one of the guys that I thought played particularly poor against Tampa Bay. Um, but he must have played better than Wisniewski because he's out there and Wisniewski isn't. So um, that's kind of concerning a, a little bit that he, that he's now the he took Barber's spot at at left guard. Um, and you got Peters at, you know, at left tackle, Kelsey at center, Brandon Brooks at right guard. They're, they're your three guys. The problem's going to really come in when Jason, if, if and when Jason Peters goes goes down. Yeah, uh, th- that's definitely a concern because then you're out with both of your starting tackles, assuming Lane Johnson's out for the first 10 
which at this right. point I'd be shocked if it wasn't as Mark Eckel yeah. joins us. Uh, let's get to the trade today. Uh, when I first heard it, I said low risk, high reward. Uh, then sure. I reached out to Frank Wycheck, and he described it as uh, as DGB looking like Tarzan but playing like Jane. So do you <laughs> like this trade? I think it's a good one for the Eagles. Yeah, I, I can't not like it. Let's put it that way. Even if he is Jane, uh, you know. It's better than Dennis uh, Kelly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, then, and, and nothing against that. I don't mean to put down Dennis Kelly. Dennis Kelly is a career backup tackle, and, you know, he's probably going to play. He's played on that. He's been how many, and he's in how many years now already? This is his, Andy Reid drafted him. So I think it's, it was, this was five, his fourth, or f- fourth or fifth, yeah. It's at least fifth because he played all three years under Chip, and this would be, and this would be four, so it's at least five. Okay. Minimum five years. Uh, I think he was part of Andy's last draft class. Yeah, so all right, five. He's already been in the league five years. He's probably going to play a couple more. He, he's a guy. He, there's a million of Dennis. There's a million Dennis Kelly's in the league, and God bless him. You, you need backup offensive linemen in this league, and he's one of them. He's a veteran. You know, he, he's a great guy. I mean, he's, you know, he's not going to cause any trouble. He's, you know, he'll he'll, he'll do what he's told. Um, so yeah, there's there's that, but. Yeah, Green Beckham, like, or maybe like Frank Whitecheck told you, he, but he does look like Tarzan. So if he ever starts to play like Tarzan, Eagles got to steal. Now, if he doesn't, well, then nothing venture, nothing lost. I mean, you know, it's, there's a chance, and he's 23 years old. I, I, that's what I like best about this trade. Is my take on this Eagles season is. It doesn't matter. This year isn't really even a, doesn't it doesn't matter. I couldn't They're agree not more. Be that good. I agree. It's all about the, the Eagles from 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 the day of the draft going forward are all about Carson Wentz. They're they're only going to be as good as Carson Wentz is. If Carson if Carson Wentz isn't isn't good, then this team's in trouble for a long time. You know. So if if Wentz is good, then the Eagles will be good. If Wentz is very good, then the Eagles could be very good. But they're going to have to put some people around Carson Wentz. They, that's like people were saying. I, I, I read some things the other day that uh, the Eagles should, should sign Marquise Colston. No, no, absolutely not. It's an I don't old want a move. Thirty-three-year-old wide receiver on his last legs. That's that's Miles Austin two point I don't. Five I don't, years I don't ago, I say sure. Five years ago, absolutely. Yes, yeah. when he was twenty-eight. Yeah, when he was still good. No, I don't. The Eagles don't need older veteran. They need young. They need to get as many good young players on the roster as possible because then they'll, they'll still be good when Wentz is good. Back in the 23, so let's say Wentz is starting next year and then and he's really good, in, you know, in 2018 is when, he, is when he comes into his own. Well, Beckham's only going to be 25. That's, that's perfect, right? Yeah. So, 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 so with, uh, yeah. So, so with DGB, like, the, the, the one concern, though, I would say – is the character concerns and there was a lot of them in college and they're all well documented and a lot of times when you have a young kid the onus goes on the coach to make sure that he does the right thing and eventually you're in the national football league you need to know the difference from right and wrong can doug put this kid in the right position i I guess that's the question to reach his fullest potential i don't know if doug i think it's up to the kid i mean you can have the the greatest coaches in the world, and I don't think Tennessee put him in the wrong position or you know wherever. I mean, the kid has to wake up, and maybe getting traded is is, will, is a wake up call for him. He just has to get his head on straight and and stop getting you know stop doing stupid things. Uh, you know, learn that you know I'm a professional now, and I have to act accordingly. And there is talent there. I mean, he's six six two forty, and he and he runs a four four nine. Guys like that don't fall off a tree. I mean, you know. He he could be something. He could turn turn out to be very good, uh, but even if he's just good, uh, that makes him one of the Eagles' better wide receivers, right? I mean, it's it's. I don't think it's. I think it's a no lose trade for the Eagles. I really do. On the way out with Mark Eccles. So let's get to the quarterback. You're exactly right. If Wentz doesn't turn out to be the real deal, this franchise turns out to be the Cleveland Browns that we know it of the last mm-hmm. decade and more. Uh, with uh, Carson Wentz, uh, what have you seen so far? I know it's limited and he has the rib injury, but do you like so far what you've seen? Yeah. I, I don't. I mean, I'm not as optimistic as some of my colleagues who, who kind of gush over him, but I like him. I mean, uh, he's, I mean he has – Again, he's a rookie, and he's from North Dakota State. And you have to keep that in mind every time you walk because it's a big jump for a kid from Alabama or a kid from Florida State or a kid from, you know, a national power like, 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 like those schools to come into the NFL. It's just a big jump. Coming from North Dakota State is twice that, that jump because 
every most I would say ninety percent of the kids he played against in college who he dominated aren't playing in the NFL. They're 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 teachers now, or they're or they're you know they're they're car salesmen, or they're, they're, but they're not playing in the NFL. And maybe they're doctors or lawyers. I don't know, but they're not they're not NFL quality players. So he's taken a big big jump to where you know he's never seen linebackers like he's seeing now or cornerbacks like he's seeing now. And he hasn't seen those kind of schemes either that, and that, you know, that defenses are, are, are going to throw at him. So I think he gets a little more of a learning curve than a kid like, you know, Jared Goff who came out of, out of the Pac-12 where he's, you know, a lot of the guys he played against are in the NFL now. And a lot of, and a lot of the schemes and things that he's seen are, you know, are more on a pro level. So you have to give him that. But what I do like is, I mean, he has great size. He's 6'5". Um, you know, he's a big, he's a big man. Um, and he can move. I mean, we, we saw, if, if we saw anything the other night and I see it every day in practice as well, but he has good mo- mobility. He can get out of trouble. Uh, he can throw on the move. Uh, I, I thought his best throws against Tampa Bay were the ones when he was on, on, on the move. Um, you know, so that, that, that's the pluses. The minuses are what you would expect. He made a couple bad decisions. Um, you know, he was a little wild high early. And then he, and then he, you know, he he threw the pick near near the um, near the goal line, which was a bad decision. He didn't see the guy. He threw a little bit a little late over the middle. But so, and that's and, that, and the sad part is he got hurt. So because I was really looking forward to seeing him, you know, Thursday night in Pittsburgh, and then against maybe a little bit against the Colts. Hey, it and takes then a all lot the buzz him. out of it. It really does. It takes all the yeah. buzz out of the preseason. Oh, there's the, yeah. It's, it's this and, and all my years. I mean, I'm you know I've been around long. Pre- I I really don't like preseason. I really, I really, I don't like the game. I don't like anything about it. Who but does? I, I, <laughs> well, some people do. I think I, I don't. But Bunch of I whack jobs. nothing, nothing good comes out of preseason. I mean, I mean, like Sam Bradford had, had that great game. Well, big deal. Look at that. <laughs> but only, I mean, only bad things. Only really, only bad things happen in preseason. Guys get hurt. Injuries. Yep. Or right. Or guys play poorly, and you wonder about them. Then I mean, so. But this, I was kind of looking forward to this preseason only because. I wanted to see Carson Wentz, and I wanted to see him. All right, so I, I have a snapshot of, of the Tampa Bay game. Now I wanted to see the next the next snapshot against the Steelers, you know, and, and just to see, did he get better? Did he correct the mistakes he made the first game? Did he, did he take the good plays that, that he made against Tampa and multiply them, you know, I, I, and then take it the next week? And I wanted to see if there was going to be a, a steady improvement or does he regress even maybe? Who knows? I mean, but now we'll never know. He's probably – they say he may play the last game against the Jets. Or they're still hoping, but I don't know. Do you put him out there if, if he's still a little sore and stuff? I, I wouldn't. So the name of the book is The Big 50, Men and yeah. Moments Who Shaped the Philadelphia Eagles by the End of the Month. I'm just going to say – Probably won't be too many names on this year's team that are going to be playing this year that will add to that if you make a sequel and make it the big 100. But uh, with that being well, said, tell me a little Wentz bit about played. the book. I think Carson Wentz has, has a chance. I sequel, said maybe. playing. <laughs> okay, there you go. Good. All right, you got me there. Yeah, nobody playing. What it is, it's, um, I really enjoyed writing it, and I, 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 it came out great. I, I, I actually have the advanced copies. Oh, nice. And it looks great. Tri- Triumph Books did a great job putting, putting it together as they always do. Um, this is my third book with them. Um, but I, I had fun. It's 50, it's 50 chapters of whatever I want it about the Eagles. It could be a player. So I have, I you know there's a chapter on Brian Dawkins, Donovan McNabb, Randall Cunningham, Reggie White, uh, going way back, Steve Van Buren, Chuck Bednarik. But then there's also chapters on events or, or moments, like um, the, the night Jer- Jer- Jerome Brown died is a, is a chapter. And, that, you know, it's a sad moment in Eagles history. Um, the um, the uh, fog bowl, which was probably the weirdest moment in Eagles history, is a is a chapter. Um, you know, then I the, the the 1980 Super Bowl team, the 2004 Super Bowl team, uh, then you know Norman Brayman, uh, Jeffrey Lurie. Um, it's it's a lot. It's it's a lot. It's there's a lot of um, it goes like I said. It, it goes from the from the Steve Van Buren and the back to back titles in 48 49, right up to Chip Kelly getting fired. So it, it covers a, a lot of years, and um, I was. What made it fun was was talking to the guys. I probably interviewed, I don't know, close to a hundred people. Um, you know, and it's fun talking to a guy about something that happened way back when, because you know you talk to him after a game, and they have their you know in, immediate reaction to it. But to talk to him, you know, ten, twenty, thirty years later, 
you get a different per- perspective on it. And uh, the, the interviews were very good. I mean, I'm, Dawkins was great. Donovan was great. Rambo was great. So it, it was, that was the fun part of it. Did you cover the potential move with uh, Leonard Toast? Did you cover that in the book? Yes, absolutely. I absolutely actually, I, I have a funny story for you actually about this. Yeah. And, um, and I know there's a lot of people that take credit for who broke that story, but my father actually was a longtime radio producer at WCAU, and uh, he was mm-hmm. on the air uh, that time and the day that Leonard was trying to move the team and was in Arizona or, or Phoenix, wherever he was. Yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah, and um, he actually called Leonard Tosa's hotel room, and back then I think he was staying maybe at the Phoenician or, or something like that, oh, and, and, and he called his hotel room, and he got the owner because back then they didn't put a fake name out for any of these hotel rooms. And my dad goes, hey, it's Bob Gelb from WCAU. We hear you're trying to sell the Eagles. And Leonard goes, Bob, get the F off my phone line. And they came back on air and reported what Leonard was doing. Wow. So wow, That's great. The, the, well, actually, a good part of that chapter is, you know, Leonard was – people hated him because he, he almost sold – Sold the team to the guy. I forget the guy's name now. It's it's in the book. Um, that was going to move him to Arizona, but Leonard actually took a. He turned down a better deal. I mean that the deal that and I came. I wish I could think of the guy's name. Uh, that was going to buy him and move him to Arizona. Offered Leonard a much better deal where he was even going to keep a, keep a piece of the team and his daughter was going to stay employed and the whole thing. Fascinating. The deal that Norman Brayman gave him was much was not nearly as as lucrative a deal, but. Norman Raymond agreed that he would keep the team in Philadelphia. So to Leonard's credit, and again, a lot of people either don't know this or, you know, don't want to, you know, they still want to hate Leonard Toes. Um, he saved I mean, he did keep the team here. He could have very easily have sold them to the other guy and gotten a better deal. He took a worse deal so that the team would stay in, in Philadelphia. And talking to the guys that played for, for, for Leonard, they loved them. Wow. The okay. That matter of fact, the, the title of, of his chapter is the, the player's owner. Wow. I mean, I, I like that. Bill Berge and Harold Carmichael tell me just how, what, I mean, he, he couldn't do, do enough for, for, the, for, for the players. Har- Harold Carmichael told me a story where Harold was a rookie now. now. Harold Carmichael became one of the greatest, if not the greatest, wide receiver in Eagles history. But as a rookie, he was a seventh-round pick out of a small school. So he wasn't Harold Carmichael yet. You know? I mean, he was just a, a rookie wide receiver. And he got hurt like midway through the year. And back then, this is how our and this is how bad things were for football players back in the whatever year, like it's the early seventies. Um, if you got hurt, they didn't have to. Like, if you weren't playing, they didn't have to pay you. How about that? How about that for for how things have changed, right? Yeah, that wouldn't but, happen so, today. <laughs> no, right? I mean, but no. If you if you got hurt and missed games, they didn't have to. They weren't especially a rookie who was yeah. on like a rookie contract, you know. So they didn't have to pay him. And here's Harold Turt, and he's thinking, oh, my God, I'm not. Like, he wasn't making that much money anyway, but it was still money. Well, Leonard, Leonard Toes approached him on the way back. It was, he, he got hurt on a, at, a, at a road game. And, and they're traveling back, and Leonard went up to him on the, on the, ride, on the plane ride back and said, listen, kid, I know you're hurt. You're probably not going to play, you know, next month or the rest of the whatever it was, and said, don't worry, I'm still paying you. Wow, fascinating stuff. Mark, we appreciate yeah. the time today. I read you every day, NJ.com, uh, and I'll read you again thanks. tomorrow. Uh, Take care.